XG boost is a cool hyperparameter called scale positive weight. And so that can potentially help us here. But it assumes that the positive is 1 and not 0. So let me show you how we can actually switch the, the 1s to 0s and the 2s to 1. So if we go to our, our Y, like our target column, which is DF label here, um, I can change that to, go ahead and do this with me. You can do a dot replace. And so what this is going to do is it's going to replace the ones with the zeros. And then you can do it again and replace the twos with the ones. So when you do that in that order, then everything will be a zero or a one. Okay. So change one, well, let's do it in order. Change one, yeah, change one to zero, two to one in target column. Now I define it as DF label, so after that, I want to go ahead then and reassign Y, okay, X is fine, um, to the target column, right? So go ahead and write code for that. Reassign Y to new DF label. And so this is just to have standard labeling and to take advantage of XG boost, you know, scale positive parameter. So let's try now y equals df label. Okay. And if you want to try to check it, y dot value counts. You know, there we have now it's labeled 0 and 1. Now, now it's actually we have to rerun some code here because we've got to now still split it. So, you know, I want to Sometimes I'm lazy and I copy code. And I also want to go ahead and copy the XGBoost model code. Okay. Oops. So sometimes when I do that, I put them both in here. Okay. So it's copied and pasted something. Command A, copy it all. Command C. But then I Command Z back to what I had. Okay. So that's just... Is it faster? I don't know. But sometimes I don't feel like writing code. I just do that. So note that the point here is that... We have Y now properly labeled. Now a couple of changes. So with the XG boost classifier, you want you can do the scale positive weight. And so what it's going to do is it's like like if we look at our labelings, you know, like I think you want to scale it. So basically think of it in terms of like the values that that you're having. Like like what type of an influence is it? Like right now it's treating the zeros and ones as equal. So when you scale the positive weights, it's it's going to try to even it out some. So I guess you want to scale this like 10 would be like 370, maybe 20 or 25. I don't know. And then also we're done with accuracy score. We don't care about that. We want the recall score. But if you're curious too, I, I think it's always worth you want to print out the classification report. And again, that's Y test, Y prediction. And I, you know, I think honestly also with the confusion matrix, okay? So pretty soon we'll, we'll write a function that does this. You'll see what I mean, the advantage of having them all in there, I think, going forward. It's just more information, and more information is better, especially in this case, when it's not as straightforward. And we also then want to print out the recall score. Okay. So let's just see. So, so we're seeing, will this scale positive weight help us, right? If it's worth something, it should, assuming we're using it correctly. Um, so we'll find out in a moment. Another little trick, by the way, which I didn't implement, though. I'm considering it based on the timing so we don't have to wait as long. And it will make a difference. It has to do with the number of rows. Wow, it's still got 0, 0.0, so it didn't actually make a difference here. That's interesting. Um... Okay, uh, and again, we're gonna fine tune this, but I can show you show you like a simple trick to, Im the question is how can you imbalance your data? There are a lot of ways you can do it. And if you go up at the very beginning, we picked a thousand rows, right? Well, what if we pick like 200? I think I might use that because it'll speed up the computations a little bit. We can go back and look at greater numbers. 
or even let's do a quarter of it, maybe 250. Okay, so instead of 1,000, let's try 250. And now I'm just going to run everything and see what happens, okay? So run time, I'm just going to reset and run all. So everything should still work because it's the same code, but I can tell you from some previous analysis that changing the number of rows will make a difference. Um, it's just like there are many techniques to try to imbalance data, and I'm not going to go over most of them because there's just a lot. But, but that's one strategy. Okay, and we'll come down, you know, it's going to do all the light plots, of course, will be the same. It's just easier to do restart and run all sometimes. So you can see those are really fast. And it should be the case, you can see that it's building the models more quickly, right? So note that the accuracy score is worse, okay? So we have less rows. These numbers are less meaningful. But you can see now from the first time is that the like the, it's starting to predict some exoplanets, right? So here, cor correctly predicted two of the exoplanets. Missed seven of them, okay. And you can see you still have a high percentage of accuracy, it, relatively 88%. But the big thing, our point here is we boost, just boosted the recall by 22% by shortening the data set. Now in the long run, less data is not going to ultimately be beneficial but it is an intermediary strategy that you can use to try to um, improve things. Because here we're just picking like what's the right, the right number of data points to start with. And then you can also see that in this particular case, scaling the positive weight now did make a difference because it wasn't, it wasn't zeros to begin with, right? And so the, the goal, look, what is our goal? We want to get all nine here. Okay, that's the goal, is to get all nine right there in the confusion in the confusion matrix. Because when we do that, we're getting all the exoplanets in the test set. What it tells us if we look at this carefully, okay, in terms of the exoplanets, the recall is the four out of nine. That's what we're looking at. That is the 44%. Okay. Now the precision here is also four out of nine, because it incorrectly predicted five of them, but we're not as concerned about that. Okay, so that basically takes care of the, the general setup. I mean, let's, let's, what we're going to do next is actually do some little hyperparameter fine tuning with grid search CV. And, you know, we didn't really play around with this. I mean, like, uh, you know, like if you go crazy with, like, what happens if we quintuple it, quadruple it? It's 25, like, I don't know, you know. Sometimes one of the best ways to see. So so note very interestingly, it didn't actually matter for the recall. Okay. Oh no, it got one more. I'm sorry, I saw the four and the five. It tells us here. So it actually did, you know, make a little bit of a difference, right? So this is actually a little better. Right? I mean, we're looking for them, maybe we just keep scaling it higher. Is this something that you can go crazy with? Let's find out. That'd be interesting. I didn't push this when I was doing research for the book, The Scale Positive Weight. You know, or maybe I, I did I don't remember because as you see, it went back down to 44. So um, do we leave it at 100? Like, is it just going to be four or five randomly? And you can see it's still at 44. So it's not the case that it was necessarily better. And this is why the random weights can be helpful. Right, so random state equals, I just pick two, typically. And so, you know, when you have a set random state, then, right, and now we did worse, but you know, maybe, and you can see I'm sort of fine-tuning this just as is from playing around with it. Yeah, the, the recall is going down there, so let's try 200. You know, there, when we do that, we're overweighting it. But, you know, again, it goes up because, the, you know, that is the goal. And it, now I think that it's set. We do want to check it again. So can we do better than that with the random state of 2? You know, can I just, like, endlessly scale the positive weight? I would assume not. Well, look at that. 67%. This is worth, wow, this is really going to be worth trying. If, 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 <laughs> if this 10,000, if this is enough just to do that, maybe we'll end early. I'll still show you. See, it went down. 
Right, and, and it's not surprisingly because it's out of control. Uh, so 1,000 gave us that good score, right? Hmm. It's like it's, it's a very variable. Okay, we're going to move on from this and do some classical fine-tuning.